if you were to read one book, if you were only to read one book on the Holocaust, the book you should read is called Survival in Auschwitz by Primo Levi. If you only were to read one book to give you the fullest possible sense of the Holocaust that you could get out of just one source, it would be that book and that book alone. If you're to read nothing else, read that book. And I would suggest to you, if you've ever talked about the Holocaust in a discussion, especially if you're one of these people who have said, you know, God, why did God allow a Holocaust? God must be so evil. Read the book. It's a powerful book. You may not be able to get through it. But here's, here's the beginning of what will happen to you. Okay? Because ultimately, if you're talking about the Holocaust, it is inexplicable. And it's more than just saying it's inexplicable. You have to actually grapple with it on some level. You have to actually read this book and try to wrap your brain around it. Because the first thing you will notice, it's a very, very harrowing, very realistic, very powerful book. But the first thing you will notice is that you will not be able to wrap your brain around it. You will see the evil of the Holocaust for what it truly is to one degree or another. You, the experience will be real to you. That's how powerful the book is, but the experience will be real to you. The, the unknowingness of this. You'll try to wrap your brain around something this profoundly evil and you will not be able to do it. You can read the book twice. It won't, you, won't, you won't be able to understand it. And in that lack of understanding, in that this just, I just don't get this, you will find the beginning stages of enough humility to actually address the problem. If you haven't experienced that, you should really be quiet. You should really, honest to God, be quiet. Because you do not have enough, you, you, you aren't bringing enough to the table to even to begin to, to address the subject. It's a powerful subject and ultimately it is, it is inexplicable. Ultimately, it, 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 the mystery of it will elude you. The reality of it will, 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 will haunt you, but you will not be able to understand. You will not be able to comprehend it. So give it a whirl. Go to wrestle with the Holocaust, with that book and that book alone. It's deep enough to take you all the way there, all the way to the doorway of pure evil that is inexplicable and cannot be understood. Then come back and try and argue. God, so God should have stopped the Holocaust. Because at least you will be arguing from some place of some humility. Now, the first thing you'll notice in the book, keep in mind, an atheist wrote this book. Atheist. This was written by an atheist. Primo Levi, one of the best writers of the 20th century. Deeply powerful book. The first thing you will notice, and this goes back to where it says in... Romans, that the things of God are clearly visible. Because one of the most amazing passages in the book, when he starts talking about what is happening to him, atheist, I don't believe in God, atheist, starts speaking the language of condemnation to his tormentors. And it is literally mind-boggling. Because even unknown to himself, the author, he starts talking in a language that sounds suspiciously like an Old Testament prophet. Build your towers that are a mockery of God and man. Quote, build your towers that are a mockery of God and man. If I told you that was from Jeremiah book 10, verse 15, you would say, yeah, that sounds right. Because that is the exact same language of the Old Testament. When the Old Testament prophet starts, you know, condemning the society around him. It is the same thing, the same voice of moral condemnation. Amazing that even the atheist brings God into it. Even the atheist, unknown to himself, brings God into the equation. Because he recognizes, even if he doesn't consciously recognize, he recognizes somewhere inside of himself that this project, this demonic abomination going on in front of him is a mockery of God. On some level, that is what it's about. It is about a blasphemy against God. It isn't just evil to man. It is sticking a middle finger in God's face 
and saying, we completely and utterly hate and reject you. Remember, the Jews are God's chosen people. Think about that. Those are God's holy people, talked about millions of times, hundreds of times in the Bible. Some level, even the atheist recognizes that this whole project is sticking its middle finger in the face of God. It isn't just about humans. Now, there are people who argue, and I've heard this said a lot, that, you know, Christianity is partially to blame for the Holocaust because of, of you know, theologically Christians isolated Jews. They don't understand. You, that's why you need to read the book before you even open your mouth on the subject. Because the subject is deeper than you. And you need some humility to even approach the subject. Because you don't even understand thing one about irrational hatred, if that's your argument. Trust me on this. You do not know what you're talking about. Ultimately, irrational hatred, as in the Holocaust, as in any marginalized group, ultimately, irrational hatred is never about the thing that you can find to find the rational explanations for, ever. In other words, whatever theological argument may have been present throughout the history of, Jew, of Jewish persecution, it was never really true. Nobody cared. Nobody ever does. Irrational hatred, the reason why the Jews were singled out so, so completely for irrational hatred has to do with one aspect of them and one aspect alone. Nothing to do with anything innate about Judaism, Christianity, or, or anything about Jews them, themselves, anything about their characteristics. One thing alone that got them singled out. They were a small minority in all the countries. They didn't have their own country. So they were a marginalized, small group. That's what leads to irrational hatred. Because at root, it is irrational. The only thing about it that gives it substance is that the group, the choice of group, has got to be somebody powerless and marginalized and outside of the mainstream. That's it. Could be anything, could be homosexuals, it could be, ask any of the people who have been in those groups. That's the real reason for the hatred. The hatred is there. The hatred is in the individual, and they hate, period, irrationally. And they're just looking for a target. So they pick the powerless, the group that is marginalized within the larger whole. That's what feeds it all the time. They, they may give it substance with arguments, oh, well, the Jews deny Jesus, blah, blah, but they don't, nobody really cares. They hate them because they hate, and they target them because they can target them, period. Period. This is why you need to read the book before you approach the subject, because the book will humble you to one degree or another, because you will not be able to wrap your brain around it. You will recognize that even if you, like, for example, there were substantive arguments that Germans would make to marginalized Jews. Oh, they're enemies of German society. They're, they're enemies of the Reich. Even if you thought that were true, you look at the, the treatment in Auschwitz, and it's inexplicable. Even if, that, even if it were an en your enemy, it's inexplicable. Because the people are on their way to the gas chamber, and sometimes someone will just pull out a club and start beating them on the way to the gas. He's already doomed. Your enemy is defeated right in front of your face, and you will just go an extra couple of yards to hurt him and humiliate him. There is no rational explanation for that whatsoever. To pretend that there is is to do a disservice to the whole idea. And this is what you don't understand if you say that it has something to do with Christians, or even something to do with Germans. It doesn't. Irrational hatred is the root of the problem. And the reason why the irrational hatred had been so persistent against Jews is because they were minorities in every society in Europe. And people hated them for that reason, mostly, because they were a powerless group, a powerless minority within a, within a society. Those are the targets. Same idea for homosexuals. But nobody really cares. Yeah, you may, you may on some level have some, you know, there may be some rational explanations, but when you start getting down into the surface of actual hatred, it's a much deeper thing than what the surface arguments are. That's why you need to read the book to really wrestle with it, to really see it and understand it.